Hello my friends. This is a picture of my dad. My dad served in the First World War from 1914 to 1918. He did two services um, in the First World War. The first was to 1915 and then he finished off in France. So my dad went to Gallipoli and then he also served in France and Belgium. This is my dad's diary. In it, he tells of the place I'm going to read the story about today. Le Quinoa, the story of a town New Zealand saved. It's written by Glyn Harper and illustrated by Jenny Cooper. Le Quinoa is a real place and this story is a true story. My dad mentions it in his diary, so this basically is a story about the time when he was in the First World War. Lekinwa, you can see, is a town in the northern part of France, and our soldiers were stationed nearby, and they devised a plan to help this place. So this is the story. I live in the town of Le Quinois in northern France. Its name is France, is pronounced Le Quinois. Le Quinois was built as a powerful fort. It has thick, low walls to protect it. These are called ramparts. The town is surrounded by ditches filled with water. These stitches are there to stop people tunnelling under the wall. The town is on high ground above two rivers. So there you can see the ramparts. And they've got, actually got trees and flowers and grass um, up there. So it's quite high. Le Quinoa has a very important connection with New Zealand. This started at the end of the First World War in 1918. The connection has continued to this day. I was about five or six when the Germans came. This was the start of the war in 1914. All the young men of our town had been called up to defend France and fight the Germans. We were expecting a big victory and the war to end quickly. So there are all the French soldiers from the town of Le Quinoa heading off to war. We were so wrong. Just weeks after our young men left for the war, the Germans arrived. We were very frightened. It was a terrible time for us. I imagine that if you and I were there, we would also be frightened. The Germans took anything they wanted. They spent, sent most of the fit men who remained in the town to work in Germany. We did not see them again for many years. Anyone who complained was thrown into jail. Goodness me, that would have been really, really frightening. There was very little food too, and the Germans took most of what we had. I remember that I was always hungry. This lasted for four long years. Wow, imagine being hungry for four years with not a lot else. At the end of that fourth year, we could hear the war getting closer and closer to Le Quinoa. We hoped that one day soon our town would be free. At the end of October 1918, the guns sounded like they were just outside the town's walls. We were very worried. We knew other towns had been destroyed when the fighting reached them, and we knew the Germans would not give up easily. Our town could be destroyed and many people killed. So here is this wee girl looking out over the town, and there were lots and lots of warplanes flying overhead. But this didn't happen. On the 4th of November 1918, New Zealand soldiers surrounded Le Quinoa so the Germans couldn't get away. These soldiers had come from the other side of the world to help France. They didn't want to hurt us, 
when they rescued our town, so they were very careful and clever in ways in the way they did this. To liberate, that means to set free, Lukanwa was going to be very hard. Our town is located on high ground above the rivers and the thick walls were good places for the Germans to hide soldiers, guns and machine guns. So it was going to be a tricky operation. Here are our New Zealand soldiers and you can see the town in the distance. An aeroplane flew over the town and dropped a message to the Germans asking them to surrender. I saw this happen with my own eyes. And so you can see lots and lots of letters. And the New Zealand soldiers actually wrote these letters. A very, very cool idea that they had. The New Zealand soldiers asked the Germans three times to surrender the town. Each time the Germans said no. The New Zealanders knew they were going to have a hard fight if their soldiers were going to rescue Le Canoua. They used their big guns, but only on the walls where the Germans were and on the islands and the moat. Now, if you remember, the moat is the water surrounding the town. And in the moat, in the water, there were some little islands. So the Germans would actually hide on those islands. When we heard the sound of their big guns crashing into the ramparts, we thought our town was going to be destroyed. We were so scared that we all hid in the cellars of our houses, but no shells landed on the town. So that was a very, very careful thing that the New Zealanders had thought of. They didn't want to hurt the people, so they did, made sure that they were aiming their guns at other places. The New Zealand soldiers then fired smoke and burning oil onto the town's walls. The burning oil drums were really terrible because a big sheet of flame would erupt skywards as they were fired. Then there would be a loud whooshing noise as the drums descended and burst into flames on the ramparts. Very, very careful thing that they were doing. This created so much smoke that the Germans couldn't see what was happening. It really scared them too. The New, Zealand, New Zealanders also used lots of machine guns to fire at the German defenders hiding on the wall. Many times the New Zealand tr soldiers tried to sneak into the town, but the Germans always stopped them. Now, I want you to zoom in if you can. You can see there is a ladder here. Let's turn the page and find out what happened with the ladder. Then a miracle happened. Some soldiers reached the inner ramparts without being seen. They used a ladder to climb the last wall into the town. Now, you need to imagine that this ladder had to have been built. They just didn't find it. They had to build it. Then they had to carry it over the top of the outside wall until they got to the inside walls. So it was a huge um, effort on the part of the New Zealand soldiers to get there. The first man up the ladder was a young officer called Leslie Avril. When he reached the top of the wall, Lieutenant Avril saw some Germans hiding behind the bushes nearby. He fired his revolver at them and they ran away. So that's Lieutenant Leslie Avril. And he's remembered quite a bit as being that first person who was brave enough to go over the rampart. Now that New Zealand soldiers were in the town, the Germans decided to surrender. They opened one of the main gates and let the rest of the New Zealand soldiers into the town. Le Canoua was saved. What a day it was. Our people went wild with joy. We gave the soldiers who saved our town whatever we could. I gave them some flowers from our garden. I also had a French flag I had kept hidden. I waved it a lot that day. Other people gave the soldiers cakes, apples, wine and bread, even though they had very little food themselves. We were so happy. I can imagine how amazing that would have felt to know that your town was free. And how you must have felt if you were a soldier. 
Later though, there were sad too because many New Zealand soldiers had been killed or hurt to liberate our town. We promised to never forget those people who had come from so far away to free us. And here again is another picture of a map of the town. This town has lots of streets named after New Zealanders. It's a very important place in our New Zealand history. I'm so very proud of my dad who served in this war and who mentions this town in his diary and of his comrades, his fellow soldiers, who helped to liberate the town of Le Quinois.